I used to know a trans woman with BPD. Your mannerisms, mannerisms and general loudness and over the topness reminds me of her sometimes. Oh, let's talk about BPD a little bit. Um, yeah. Um, so let's talk about BPD a little bit. There's a lot of bias against BPD. There's a lot of stereotypes about BPD, um, which is called borderline personality disorder. Um, and, um, honestly, a lot of this comes from the fact that, uh, there was psychiatric bias against BPD. There was a point in the near history, uh, in recent history, I'm talking like within the last 20 to 30 years that BPD was considered an incurable nightmare condition, which is ridiculous, which is absolutely ridiculous. So ridiculous. Um, the reality is that people did not understand BPD at all. And as it turns out, a lot of BPD people who found ways to live a good life were the ones that needed to be listened to because they actually knew what was going up on their head. Um, it makes you feel so much worse when everyone else is convinced you're a monster. You convince yourself of it too. Well, see, that's the thing. Yeah, BPD best pussy disorder. True. I mean, look, I'm not going to lie. You can ask my partners. You find, you tell me, you tell me, okay? You tell me, all right? Listen, um, but, uh, but let's be real here. Let's, let's, Let's not goof around. Um, I've been diagnosed with BPD before. I've avoided talking about it because a lot of people think it makes you a bad person. Um, they still do that a lot of the time. I, I've got B Well, yes, because you can't undo damage like that. When, um, when, when people, uh, when people get a bad idea in their head, it takes a long time to get that out. Okay. A lot. Uh, of time to get that out of the general uh, atmosphere. There are a lot of people who are still to this day convinced that BPD is like a nightmare, incurable disorder, but that's really not true. The reality is that night that BPD just operates in very specific ways that can be hard to address. Um, I, it took me a long time to figure out I had BPD. One of the things that actually helped me is a video by Curio. I'm going to show you this video. Okay. Let me show you the video. This is the video right here. It's called Seeing Yourself, BPD in the Media. This is a video by Curio, one of the greatest videos that, uh, that, that I have ever seen on BPD. It's a fantastic video. Um, people think that BPD means that you're like the most manipulative, uh, evil person on the planet or something, but that is not even close to true. In fact, there are a lot of really fucking dumb B people with BPD who aren't good at being manipulative at all. Um, the, the thing about BPD is that BPD tends to be the result of childhood trauma, which means that it tends to sort of evolve in, uh, in lockstep with, uh, uh, hyper empathy with, uh, people reading skills. So yes, are, are, are some people with BPD very manipulative? Yes. Many people without BPD are very manipulative as well. Um, BPD is neurological, but it can be treated and helped to make life more safe and enjoyable. Yes. It's just, um, it's just the thing with BPD is that, uh, BPD is, is a way that your brain shapes in response to, uh, to trauma. Um, and the reality is that, uh, it is, I, I understand BPD best as a series of, of, of extreme mental tools. I grew up in an extremely, uh, strenuous emotional environment. I grew up in a cult. I grew up with a parent who was very abusive to me. I grew up with a lot of interfamilial fighting. Um, and so, um, the result is that I have, I have developed emotionally a bunch of tools to survive against that, that don't work really well, um, in a lot of, um, in, in a lot of other circumstances. Um, so, so I had to learn how to, how to, uh, cope with those tools, you know? Um, so for example, let me give you one such example. Some call that trauma. It is trauma, but there are different responses from trauma. It also develops with self-harm and becomes comorbid in that the, that way as that you stop feeling reward from progress and instead feel it from harming. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. That is very, very true. And you want to know what's really weird? Here's where it gets really complicated, okay? Because a lot of times you learn to self-harm in very strange ways, okay? For example, myself, I have talked about on this stream that I am a workaholic and it, I put, I put my, my schedule for the day up to a vote. So let's be real. I'm calling myself out here a little bit. 
Um, yeah, I have self-harmed through work many, many times, many times in the past. I have self-harmed through staying in horrifically abusive relationships because I because of exactly what uh, healthygamer.gg was talking about there. This idea that, like, the abuse that you understand is safer than the, the, the loneliness you don't understand. Right? So I've done that in the past. But the thing about BPD is that um, something that a lot of people don't understand. Some people think that BPD is like, um, like, like, like psychopath. That you don't feel any emotions but in reality that's not entire that, that's not even close to true most people with bpd have such intense emotions that you can barely even understand you can barely contain them you can barely even understand them they're so intense it's the exact opposite and so sometimes people respond by shutting down completely yeah exactly did somebody say rationalizing abuse yep um and and uh yeah, and, and the thing is, and it, the thing is that a lot of times those strong responses are natural, are natural to really intense things. Um, for me, there are times where I cannot contain my emotions. Now, you probably don't see those on stream very frequently because stream is a unique environment, but there have been times where I have done extreme things to try and uh, alleviate emotional pain. I'm talking things like um, in the past, I have flown across the country on uh like after buying a ticket eight hours before you know bef like eight hours after thinking about doing it i just said i'm buying a ticket i'm going to go do this thing because this is what will solve my emotions these emotions are so intense that it's making me feel like everything is the end of the world and i have learned over many 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 years of um of 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 dealing with this how not to be um you know be be uh full of that was the feeling of emptiness a thing for you you can get a feeling of emptiness as a result of of not being able to co to process the emotions that's literally the plot of crazy ex-girlfriend i've heard that crazy ex-girlfriend but i've done that i have been the cr well i have been one of two crazy girlfriends we were both crazy uh, many times um but the other side that people don't recognize of BPD, people think about the crazy girlfriend things. You know what I mean? That's the stereotype of BPD. It's a crazy girlfriend who does crazy things because she was hurt. But what they don't actually um, ever talk about is they never talk about the other side of that. The amount of control that goes in to uh, taking care of the emotions and the ways that your emotions can be uh, exploited. I have had exes who, uh, who knew that I had intense emotions and were able to prey on that specifically because they knew my emotions were so strong that they could use those emotions to basically get me to do whatever I want. I saw the BPD breakdown in you with that combo with RGR. After you got off call, I had fucking been there. That combo was such an emotional toll on me for that reason. Yeah, I shut off, I shut off my stream because I knew I was going to... I immediately started crying after that stream. It was too much. I couldn't even process it. So, uh, you know, uh, one of the ways that I process, um, my emotions is by expressing them. So you all notice, like, it's literally a meme. People make fun of me for how emotive I am, for the fact that I swing my arms and I do things like this and I make silly faces and all of that. That's because me healthily channeling these strong emotions makes me stronger. It makes me communicate better. It keeps the, um... It keeps the level of emotion this far down because I'm letting it out in my own way. That's not harmful. I don't harm. I, I, I am emotive, but I'm not harmful to people. Yeah, I'm just expressive. I'm very expressive. I'm a bit theatrical. So be, so what? That's how I feel. That's how I am. And the thing is, like, I think that people have very negative stereotypes about BPD because they meet, they meet people who have completely, who are totally unaware of the fact that they have BPD and whatever. Um, except when I punched that guy. At McDonald's. I didn't punch anybody at McDonald's, you fucker. That was an accident, okay? That was an accident. I didn't see him coming, and I was waving my arms around, and I accidentally bonked a guy on the head because he came up behind me. I was I was telling a story at McDonald's, and I was waving my arms like this, and a guy came up beside me, and I knocked him in the nose with my hand and he went oh my god i'm sorry and then he left the store 
He literally left the McDonald's and I felt horrible because I was just telling a story, but then he said, I'm sorry. And then left the McDonald's and never ordered. He just ran away. I was like, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I wasn't trying to attack him. I didn't even see him. I didn't even fucking see him. Okay. Listen. Yeah. One nose at a time. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so sorry to that, to that individual. I apologize, okay? LB says, I was having a really bad time earlier this year. I was in a relationship that was pretty bad where I really liked this person who would who would withdraw affection a lot. I kind of really lost myself for a while and, and just felt extremely depressed, worried about everything. People with BPD are very, very vulnerable to the withdrawal of, of, uh, of affection, to the withdrawal of emotional engagement. It's something that uniquely affects BPD people. It affects everyone. We all know that it hurts to have emo uh, to have like intimacy withdrawn. But BPD people are are tend to be particularly particularly vulnerable to that because BPD is usually uh uh usually sort of developed as a result of childhood trauma. It's very difficult and it can make relationships really hard. And that's why BPD people, uh, if you go by the textbook, uh, BPD people tend to have lots of emotionally uh, explosive relationships, um, you know, but, but, uh, but that's not always true either. I have had my fair share in the past, but um, yeah, the abandonment is, is major. Uh, is it is it warm in my room? It is so hot in this room. It's unbelievable. Yes, I am sweating because it is so warm in this room. It's unfucking believable how hot it is in this room right now. I would open the window, but people were being really loud outside. People are being super loud. Are there comorbidities with DID? I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are some. But the, the, the reality is that uh, B people have a really bad idea of what BPD is, and it influences a lot of people to, uh, uh, to discriminate against people with BPD. And that's why in the past, I've been very, very reluctant to talk about it. But um, in the last few months, I've started talking about it more because I found that talking about it openly is actually more valuable, even if people go around and say, oh, Dima Mama admits to being BPD. You don't need to listen to anything that she says. She's irrational and evil and bad. And the reality is I'm not irrational or evil or bad. In fact, my BPD throughout my life has encouraged me to uh, develop a meticulous way of, of, of keeping track of reality. I'm serious. I take extensive notes on, on almost everything I do because... I have been gaslit, gaslit in the past. I have been manipulated. I have had my BPD extreme emotions used against me, and I have lived my entire life with my BPD emotions. Um, I know that sometimes, um, sometimes I feel very intensely, and so I never react immediately out of emotion unless I have no choice. I, I've trained myself over the course of my life to never do that. And um, But not everybody has that same you know, background. I really fucking appreciate it. Thank you for showing people like us aren't monsters to be feared. A lot of the time, others make us fear them. Yes. Yes. I don't hear anyone talking openly about BPD. That's made it extremely hard to deal with because you don't feel like there's anyone else who relates to it and makes you feel really alone, which is really bad because BPD, ac BPD acts on, on fear of abandonment so intensely. It acts so intensely on fear of abandonment. I have endured extreme, extreme personal abuse as a result of fear of abandonment. And it isn't, it is sometimes, it's not always irrational. It's just extreme. Sometimes it is perfectly rational. I mean, I had reasons to fear being abandoned by my old best friend who ended up abusing me for a long time. I had reasons to believe that, but, uh, my fear led me to act in a way that was not good for me. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yes, there is a lot of commonality with the irrationality. But the thing is, is that you can learn to read those emotions and not discard them. Here's the thing. Stoicism does not work well for people with BPD. People with BPD really do not uh, benefit well from so-called stoicism. You cannot suppress them. 
You cannot suppress those emotions. You have to learn to absorb them, to, to learn from them, to litany against fear them. That is the only way. You cannot stoic your way through BPD emotions. It is not possible. They are too intense. They will destroy your mind. Aubrey says, I don't think I have BPD, but there seem to be a lot of crossovers in some behaviors with being autistic. Of course there is. It sounds so difficult and I send all my love to anyone with BPD. It can be difficult, but here's the thing. There are good things about BPD as well. Like, I don't like, at least in the way that I look at things, I don't like to, to look at things as purely disordered, you know? Um, purely disordered. Like, I, I think that that's a little bit of a limited... Um, a limited analysis. There are things that, like, again, I can survive some pretty extreme situations and also extreme pain because of the survival tools that we call BPD. I have been able to survive things that other people would die from because of the survival instincts that we call BPD. And while it is true that BPD is... um uh is is something that can can affect relationships negatively if you learn it it can make you a stronger person it can make you a much stronger person for example i am incredibly incredibly vigilant i am hyper vigilant and i've learned to uh alleviate some of the symptoms of hyper vigilance but my hyper vigilance has also made me very very good at watching out for legitimate dangers, at watching out for economic, um, personal, uh, uh, political dangers, and to predict these things in advance. PTSD, uh, Gayfesh says, PTSD develops because there are very good to coping mechanisms for the si situations that give you PTSD. They just don't help much when you leave that situation. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry, Bonk Staley. I understood what you were saying. And also, there are things that I really like, which is that, like, uh, I'm not going to lie. I love the intense emotions of passion that BPD brings me. And I'm going to talk about something really, really, uh, yeah, me too, Joy Drill Kill. I know. But let me, let me try, let me try to explain this. Um, the way that I am in relationships is um really 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 fucking hard for some people to de deal with and as a result of me growing older i have learned to find people who who uh who work well with my level of intensity because i am very passionate i am insane lit like i will say i am in insanely passionate when i attach to somebody i am almost i'm ob obsessed with them um I, I, I love them so much and I never want to stop thinking about them. And that goes true for my partners that I'm with right the fuck now. I think about my partners all the time. I'm so, oh my God, they're like, they, they are literally a piece of my soul, it feels like. They are so important to me. And um, not everyone can deal with that. Not everyone can deal with that. Uh, yes, BPD, I truly think is what was historically nymphomania. That's part of it. Certainly one of them. Lots of BPD people are nymphomaniacs. Uh, look, don't... I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth, okay? I plead the fifth. Um, all right? Uh, I plead the motherfucking fifth on that, okay? Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, okay? Um, I don't care. I like it. But that's the thing. See, I embrace that part of me and I find people who can work with that part of me, which has been great, which has been fantastic. And it makes me happy. There are some parts of BPD that I have to fight against. Brim says the intense emotions can be a curse, but also weirdly a blessing to me whenever I have really intense, positive ones and enjoy them. I enjoy that aspect of BPD, but I remember I have to try and level out my emotions when they get too low and ride the highs when I can. Yeah, you have to learn your own style. This is why I think that like there are limitations to viewing every every different way of your brain working as a disorder. Um, in truth, the entirety of BPD is not a disorder. It is a direct response to trauma that you experience. It can become disordered as your uh, as the circumstances of your life change, but not everything needs to be tossed out. These are this is ways that your your brain evolves, and there are strengths that can be 
gathered uh, from these things. The kid says, yo, it's super interesting to hear about other personality disorders. I struggle with narcissism. You want to talk about something being demonized? I'm very passionate about destigmatizing personality disorders, but I really don't understand experiences right now. I relate to you a lot in some ways, and it's super validating to hear. I hate how people think we're not trying to act healthfully. Yeah, people are really ridiculous about it, um, and I really don't like how people talk about NPD. Stuart J. Atkinson says, it's really something to consider with the dissolution of relationships, too. I had a breakdown trying to help my ex because everyone was geared toward exes should be left behind. Well, I, I, yeah, that's tough. Alien Geranium says, what do you think about the whole idea of attachment theory in relationships? Do you find it applicable or harmful in the context of dealing with BPD? Um, attachment theory, I think, is too limited. It's too limited. There are some areas where it can be helpful, but I think it's too limited, personally. A lot of people with NPD are fucking horrible and give us a bad name, but I think that this proves we just need better healthcare and awareness. Hey, here's a secret. A lot of people with anxiety are really horrible. A lot of people with obsessive compulsive disorder are really fucking horrible. As it turns out, um, just because you have a specific disorder doesn't make you a horrible person. There are horrible people with every disorders. It's really too bad that people are always looking for a um, scapegoat. And so they immediately just, uh, just, they immediately just dunk on you. Alien Geranium, whoops, went back to white name mode. BPD gang, BPD gang. Yeah, listen, much love to all my fellow BPD havers. You're not, it's not the end of the world. Everyone who tells you that it's the end of the world is fucking stupid. I'm serious. It's not the end of the world. Not even close. There's a difference between someone having NPD and then being a dick bag. I think if a lot of people got help, they'd be a lot better off just because of the nature of NPD. Oh, here's another thing I want to talk about that, that applies also to NPC, uh, to NPD. I almost said NPC, to NPD. Okay, here's something with, with borderline personality disorder that a lot of people don't understand. So a lot of people hear about splitting. Wait, let me ask, let's just do a quick, let's just do a quick, uh, uh, a quick thing. Do you know what splitting is with regard to mental health yes or no okay yes. okay let me tell you okay so good 55 percent already know 45 don't okay i'm gonna explain this to you uh so you all can know what i'm talking about here so splitting is something that's usually talked about um with regard to uh with regard to borderline personality disorder splitting refers to essentially a trauma response by which you make a snap decision and your emotions make a snap decision for you as to whether something is a threat or not a threat so splitting um is uh basically so splitting is yeah you will basically have you basically come to a all good all bad um, no in between it's black and white thinking is is a way of doing it now here's a couple things that people don't understand one b splitting is usually almost always in reference to interpersonal relationships not not moral issues or political issues so it's not like people with bpd are more than like are more likely to become a republican because they see political issues black and white um it's because um Splitting refers to specifically individual people. So for example, if somebody makes you very, if somebody hurts you, you might think they're a bad person and you might be very, very, it might be very hard to convince you otherwise because your emotions are telling you this person has been lying to me all along. They must have been, they must have been out to get me. They've, all of this is a sign that I was wrong about them. That's an example of, of, of splitting black as they call it, where you conclude that something is, is bad. Because in the moment your BPD hijacks and says, you need to survive this, you need to, that's a bad person, get away from them. But there's also another thing called splitting white, which is where uh, you see only the good in someone or something, okay? So yeah, yeah, Artemis says, yeah, I'm just going to be abandoned again, so I might as well do it first. Exactly! Thank you! That is a splitting black moment. A splitting white moment is, let me give you a specific example. A splitting white moment is when your abusive partner abuses you to your face in a way that is obvious to everyone else on the planet, but you think it was your fault because they can't do anything wrong, and you know, you know that, 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 that it's, it's, you're, you're so bad. It's gotta be, they're so good. They're so good. They would never do that. They would never do that to anybody. And so even when everybody else on the planet is telling you that person is hurting you, you go, no, 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 they didn't do anything wrong. This was my fault. This is my fault. And there's another level as well. 
because, and I didn't know about this when I first learned about BPD, but I've learned about this since, which is called, which is many people with BPD self split. Okay. Because you can split uh, externally, you can externalize your splitting where it affects your, your judgment of other people, but you can also split with regard to yourself. And this happens to me. And it can even take on the look of something like bipolar, even though it isn't bipolar. Okay. It's borderline. So for example, there are times where I literally, can, it emotionally, now mentally I can now, but emotionally I cannot see a single good thing about myself. And this often induces, um, induces emotional, like, like depressive episodes because I have split black on myself. Okay. Um, and yeah, intrusive thoughts are, are very common with self-splitting, but there are other times where in, and almost always this happens in moments of great intensity, not just little things. I'm talking about incredible intensity. There are also moments where I have split white on myself and I'm like, there's, I did nothing wrong here. I did nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong here. Um, the difference between type one and type two, uh, B, there's only one type of BPD. You're thinking of, of bipolar disorder. Um, maybe, maybe Stuart Atkinson, we could probably talk about that maybe another time. I don't know if I can do, I don't know if I can handle any conversations tonight, but yeah, um, splitting is really tough to deal with. It can be really hard because you don't even realize you're doing it a lot of the time. Um, there have been times recently where, where I've realized, and there are times where I've been like, I've said to my partners, I'm really sorry. I think I'm just splitting black on myself right now because all that I can see about myself is the worst things imaginable. Just that's it and nothing else. And uh, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of splitting is self-splitting. So people will demonize BPD people because, oh, well, demon uh, well, BPD people always have a black and white view of the world. First of all, that's not true. BPD people don't have a black and white view of the world. They have a black and white view of specific interpersonal relationships. Cucumber Nick says, how often does splitting happen? It depends on the individual. Splitting can happen frequently or, or, or infrequently. It really depends on the person. I denied my diagnosis for years because I was told by my psychiatrist that splitting was about worldview and other people where mine was always about myself. It isn't. It's very rarely about worldview. This reminds me a little bit about when you were talking about how a certain friend used to treat you and us imps were like, mama, that was abusive. They were being abusive. And you were like, nah, it wasn't that bad. They're not an abuser. It took me a bit to think about it. Yeah, I've done that before. I have done that before. I know that's something that I've done wrong. Um, in the past that sometimes I have blinded myself with my own, uh, with my own splitting on other people. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is like, again, everyone has times, every single person, um, every single person has times where they think poorly of themselves and whatever. But what I'm talking about is this is a systemic thing. Like I'm telling you, like guys, my, my early twenties was, was absolute suffering because uh, not just, not only my own fault. It's not like a B, like it was all my own fault, but my early twenties, especially before I knew I had BPD was abject suffering because I didn't understand anything about why my emotions were so intense. I didn't know how to deal with them properly. Other people took advantage of that all the time. And I didn't know that I was being attacked, um, being taken advantage of on that front. It's really tough. It really is. So, you know, not everyone is going to, not every single person is going to have BPD who has these symptoms, but these symptoms can be a sign and it's important to get to know yourself a little better. I recently started dating a woman who has BPD and DID and this conversation has really helped me empathize a little bit more. Thank you for this. No problem. BPD, listen, if you like me, if you think I'm cool, well, guess what? There's other people who are cooler than me out there who have BPD. I'm not the only person in the world. It'd be awesome to have another large mental health panel again, like Katarana hosted. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Uh, Gimpy G with the 100 bits. What disability are we talking about? This sounds like my nephew who cares for me. I'm quadriplegic. Um, we're talking about BPD, borderline personality disorder. 
mental health talk freaks me out. This is very digestible. Well, a lot of times when people talk about mental health, they talk about it with regard to like very, very clinicalized. I don't tend to have a hyper clinicalized approach. I try to keep it real and make it make sense to people who may not have like a clinical background. I don't think clinical approaches are the only way to deal with mental health. I just think that sometimes you need a clinical approach. Yeah. Yeah, I try to keep it real. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, a lot of people will just straight up uh, discriminate against people with BPD, which is really bad. I've had bad medical experiences. Yeah, totally. I completely understand that. Me too. I have. Clinicality can be very depersonalizing. Well, yeah, it does that. It, 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 uh, sometimes the clinical approach adopts a depersonalizing language for the specific reason of being able to uh, assume sort of like distanced moral, uh, like distancing themselves from the morals of what they're doing. Are there good medical experience in the U.S.? Yes, there are. Of course there are. Uh, my, my current doctor is incredible. It's a, uh, a public health clinic that was set up by the Black Panthers like in the 80s. It's an amazing clinic. Absolutely incredible. So, yeah. There are good medical experiences. Just they're few and far between, unfortunately. I, I, I try to resist... Um, I try to resist uh, talking about mental health in a way that ta that fixates on disorders and stuff like that. And the reason for that is because um, how we categorize disorders changes all the time. In the past, a lot of things that would that we would understand to be uh, depression or anxiety or other thing or PTSD today. Um, would have been categorized as completely different names. So it's not the names that matter as much. It's the things that you're dealing with and how you um, respond to that, how you respond to that. And how we can teach people to respond to that. How much you want to bet you're going to get shit for this? I won't. No one will ever respond to this. None of my none of my opponents will ever respond to this particular uh, uh, segment of the debate because uh, they would have to wade through a bunch of good faith, genuine talk, and they wouldn't do that because they don't want to portray to their audience that I'm good faith at all. Cyberheart says, I've recently been pondering the thought that there's no such thing as disorders. That it's all just what the current society deems unfit for it. Yeah, there's a meme that I sometimes point to. Um, hold on. Let me see if I can I find it. it. I don't know if I saved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. I found it right here. This is the one. Okay? This is the meme. ADHD pre-civilization. I am one of the most effective hunter and gatherers the world has ever seen. ADHD in modern society. Uh, 9 to 5 gives me big sad. It's true, though. True. It is true that some disorders aren't considered disorders by different types of societies. Um, there's a concept in disability advocacy, which talks about society is the one that determines a disability, not disabled people. That is specifically a society that gets to decide who is disabled and who isn't. Grime Dango says, before any concept of CPTSD existed, I'd have been diagnosed with BPD. That happened all the time. I have a lot of BPD peeps and DID peeps in my circles because we all share some experiences and our brain, weir our brain weirds can synergize. Indeed, our brain weirds can synergize. They talk about that a lot, read the deaf community. Yes, it's a language skill. It is. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very strange. And so I tend to be a little bit... Um, uh, I tend to be a little bit critical of models of, of uh, neurodivergence and, and the way that people talk about disability. Disability justice is based and epic and will, I, and will radicalize you in like two seconds. Yes, it does. Yes, it will. I was actually about to ask you to talk about the social model of disability in, relation to in relationships to mental health. It's such a useful tool in disability advocacy and so few people are aware of it. Okay, here's a real quick. Here's a real quick thing. Okay? There's a joke that all streamers have ADHD because basically every streamer you can think of probably has ADHD and has openly talked about it. And that's an example of this. That's a, that's a point in favor of the social model, right? Because, um, just because I'm not good at certain types of work doesn't mean I don't kick ass at other types. ADHD people are really good at streaming because streaming engages us on multiple channels of input in a, in a way that we can control. I don't have to be uh, forced to engage with people in a way that I'm uncomfortable with most of the time, barring extre ext extreme examples. But 
Um, but, uh, but I'm able to, to keep track of multiple streams and I'm able to be good at that. Um, and the truth is that in many cases, what we determine a disability is determined by the, by the social context that we exist within. Our society determines that, um, that like, uh, being, uh, you know, distractible is a bad thing instead of something that could be used elsewise.